First Lady Arya Ali distributes back-to-school supplies to 500 children in Better Hope and Tiger Bay. In a heartwarming initiative to support education, Her Excellency Arya Ali, the First Lady of Guyana, distributed back-to-school backpacks and essential supplies to approximately 500 children from the Better Hope and Tiger Bay communities. The distribution exercise took place at the Better Hope Community Center Ground and the One Guyana Kitchen on Main Street. The children, ranging from nursery to secondary school levels, received backpacks filled with essential school items, including lunch kits, books, pencils, pens, rulers, sharpeners, erasers, hand towels, lunch bowls, and bottles. The initiative aims to equip students with the necessary tools for a successful school year ahead. Speaking at the event, First Lady Ali emphasized the importance of education as a foundation for success and urged parents to ensure their children complete their schooling. Education is key to success, and we want to ensure that every child is equipped for a great term ahead. These supplies are not just for today, but to support you all the way to your final careers, she stated. The event saw a significant turnout, with scores of children and parents gathering at the Better Hope Community Center ground. Zaman Shaw, the chairman of the Better Hope Community, was also present to support the initiative. This distribution exercise is part of the First Lady's ongoing efforts to promote education and provide resources to children across Guyana. The initiative reflects the broader commitment of the government and the First Lady to ensure that every child has the opportunity to succeed in their educational journey. President Ali distributes sports gear to 450 youths, unveils ambitious plans for cricket development in Guyana. Recognizing the pivotal role of youth in Guyana's development, President Dr. Mohamed Irfan Ali highlighted the government's substantial investments in sports infrastructure and youth development initiatives. The announcement was made during a special event held at the Arthur Chung Conference Center, where sports gear was distributed to 450 young cricketers from across the country. President Ali underscored the government's commitment to creating world-class sports amenities that will nurture the next generation of national, regional, and international athletes. With plans to establish a state-of-the-art cricket academy, Guyana aims to become a leading hub for cricket, fostering elite fast bowlers, spinners, and batsmen. The cricket equipment you receive today is a step toward your exposure to higher standards of the game, President Ali told the youths. He encouraged them to set up home practice nets to hone their skills, emphasizing the importance of dedication and sacrifice in realizing their full potential. The president also announced exciting developments for the country's cricket infrastructure, including the upcoming construction of a world-class cricket facility at Good Hope on the east coast of Demerara. Additionally, Guyana is set to host international cricket matches at the new Palmyra Stadium in Region 6 in 2025 and has already requested to host the entire Women's Caribbean Premier League CPL, tournament at Anna Regina Stadium in Region 2. President Ali further disclosed that the cricket stadium in Region 10 would be completed by the end of the year. These initiatives are part of a broader government strategy to invest in over 250 cricket grounds nationwide and operationalize the indoor facility at the National Stadium in Providence. In a major boost to the cricketing community, Sir Clive Lloyd, a legendary figure in West Indies cricket, will be joining the efforts in Guyana full-time to lead the cricket academy. The government is also recruiting former national West Indian players to be part of this transformative program. Minister of Culture, Youth, and Sport, Charles Ramson Jr., reiterated the government's dedication to youth development, stressing that success on the global stage requires hard work, dedication, and sacrifice. He announced that land preparations would soon begin on the 20-acre site for the new Cricket Academy, which is poised to attract talent from across the region. Prime Minister Brigadier, Redded, Mark Phillips highlighted the long-term vision of President Ali's initiative, predicting that the investment in youth cricket would yield significant results over the next decade. The event, attended by several government ministers and officials from the Guyana Cricket Board, culminated in a friendly cricket match between President Ali and the young athletes. Completion of $475 million cemetery road rehabilitation to enhance West and East Ruimvelt communities. The long-awaited Cemetery Road Rehabilitation Project, valued at $475 million, is set to be completed within the next 48 hours, according to the Minister of Public Works, Bishop Juan Edge Hill. This significant infrastructure project, which faced numerous challenges during its execution, is now in its final stages, promising to enhance the aesthetic and functionality of the West and East Ruimvelt communities. During a site inspection on Saturday, Minister Edge Hill reported that 96% of the work has been completed, with only two pedestrian bridges left to cure after the recent casting of cement. The embankment closer to Princess Street is currently being cast and is expected to be finished by this evening. 
However, this section of the road will require approximately two weeks of curing time before it can be asphalted to ensure uniformity. During this period, the road will only accommodate light traffic. The project has seen several upgrades, including the widening of certain sections of the road using a culvert design, expanding the thoroughfare by approximately six feet. In addition, streetlights have been installed along the road's median to improve security for residents. Minister Edge Hill expressed confidence that within the next 48 hours, the site will be fully cleaned up, with all machinery and equipment removed, allowing traffic to flow smoothly through Cemetery Road. This achievement fulfills a promise made by the minister in July to have the road completed before the reopening of schools, with the commitment being met one month ahead of schedule. The project involved multiple subcontractors working simultaneously to meet the tight deadline. Devkin Construction Incorporated handled the construction of the culverts and is now completing the pedestrian bridges, while GDJ Logistics was responsible for transforming the site by removing obstacles and completing the paving works. Avanash Contracting Company, the main contractor awarded the contract, continues to finalize the remaining tasks. Minister Edge Hill acknowledged the challenges faced by the contracting company and highlighted the valuable lessons learned during the project. He emphasized the importance of experience and effective management in executing major infrastructure projects, noting that low bids, while winning contracts, require careful management to stay within budget. In addition to the roadworks, the project also included the construction of fences to enclose the cemetery. However, the minister made a public appeal for residents and funeral parlors to refrain from damaging the new fences while building tombs for their deceased relatives. He emphasized that the government's efforts to improve infrastructure should not be undermined by actions that destroy public property. The final product of the Cemetery Road Project will see the transformation of the road from two lanes to four lanes, facilitating smoother traffic flow and enhancing the lives of residents in the surrounding areas. This project is a testament to the PPPC government's commitment to modernizing the country's infrastructure and improving the livelihoods of its citizens. Government allocates $7 million for North Pakaraima's district games to boost youth sports development. The government of Guyana has committed $7 million towards the upcoming North Pakaraima's district games, set to take place later this August in Region 8, Potaro Siparuni. This investment is part of the government's ongoing efforts to support youth development through sports across the country. Minister of Amerindian Affairs, Pauline Sukhai, announced the funding during the regional Tesheos meeting held in Paramakatoy on Saturday. The financial support is being provided by the Ministries of Amerindian Affairs and Culture, Youth, and Sport, reflecting a collaborative effort to enhance sports in the region. Minister Sukhai emphasized the government's dedication to fostering youth development, urging local leaders to prioritize sports and education for their communities. Villages are receiving funding, and they can allocate a portion for youth, women, and scholarships. The government is always willing to support to the best of our affordability, she stated. The North Pakaraima's district games will see participation from 22 teams representing various villages, including Cato, Kapanang, Tuzning, Itabak, Kamana, Bamboo Creek, Chiang Mouth, Chenapu, Paramakatoy, Kanapang, Makewak, and Monkey Mountain. The teams will compete in a range of sports, including football, volleyball, archery, and cricket. Christopher Chung, president of the North Pakaraima Sports Committee, welcomed the initiative, highlighting the positive impact it will have on the youth of the region. The regional Tesheos meeting was attended by key officials, including regional chairman Hedley Pio, the ministry's project coordinator Bisham Ramsaywak, and the region's management development officer Antonio George. This initiative follows the government's tradition of supporting sporting events in the region. Last year, the North Pakaraima's district games received similar backing, as did the ongoing Upper Mazaruni district games in Kamarong Village. Additionally, the government continues to allocate significant funds for the annual Heritage Games, allowing athletes from across the country to showcase their talents. Further demonstrating its commitment to sports development, the government has provided approximately 200 Amerindian villages with $1 million each to improve their sports facilities, ensuring that young athletes have the resources they need to excel. Dr. Barrett Jagdio defends right to question judiciary's decisions amid electoral fraud trial delays. General Secretary of the People's Progressive Party, PPP, Dr. Barrett Jagdio, emphasized the importance of questioning judicial decisions, stating that doing so should not be construed as an attack on the judiciary. His remarks were made during a news conference at Freedom House, Robb Street, Georgetown, on Thursday. Dr. Jagdio's comments come in response to criticisms from the People's National Congress Reform, PNCR, and the Alliance for Change, AFC, 
Regarding his earlier expressions of concern over delays in the electoral fraud trial linked to Guyana's 2020 general and regional elections, you have the right to make the decisions. We're not questioning that, but don't tell me I can't question that you would rule that 32 to 33 is not the majority of 65 and that I must live with it without questioning it, Dr. Jagdio remarked, referencing a controversial ruling from the past. He further underscored that the PPP's decision to challenge the ruling at the Caribbean Court of Justice, CCJ, was crucial in preventing the APNU from remaining in government based on the contested decision. Dr. Jagdio clarified that respectfully questioning rulings, especially those perceived as lacking substantiation, is a legitimate exercise of scrutiny. He criticized the PNCR and AFC for labeling his concerns as attacks on the judiciary, highlighting their historical attempts to undermine judicial independence. If anyone has a history of undermining the independence of the judiciary, it is the PNC, he stated, referencing past incidents during the PNC's governance. General Secretary of the People's Progressive Party, PPP, Dr. Barrett Jagdio. Dr. Jagdio reiterated the PPP-C's commitment to democracy and the independence of the judiciary, noting that the party's democratic credentials are well established in Guyana. Our democratic credentials here are very established. Our position as a political party and as a government in terms of respect for the independence of the judiciary is unmatched in Guyana, he asserted. The ongoing electoral fraud trial, which involves prominent political figures and former election officials, has faced another delay, with the next hearing rescheduled for September 17, 2024. Dr. Jagdio voiced his concerns over these delays, suggesting that legal strategies are being used to frustrate and delay the trial's progress, potentially leading to injustices. The trial stems from allegations of conspiracy to alter the 2020 election results, with the defendants facing 19 conspiracy charges. A Presidential Commission of Inquiry, COI, in April 2023 concluded that senior GCOM officials had colluded to alter the election results in favor of APNU plus AFC, undermining the electoral process. The COI report highlighted shockingly brazen attempts by key officials to derail the vote counting process and favor a particular political party. Ministry of Public Works to employ 50 residents for Whitewater Village Road Project in Region 1. The Ministry of Public Works is set to directly employ close to 50 residents from Whitewater Village in the Mabaruma subdistrict of Region 1, as construction is about to commence on a 1.2-kilometer road project. This initiative, valued at approximately $200 million, aims to bring significant benefits to the local community by reinvesting close to $20 million into the village through labor costs over a three-month period. During a community meeting held at Whitewater Primary School on Saturday, Minister of Public Works, Bishop Juan Edge Hill, emphasized the government's commitment to providing equal opportunities to all citizens, regardless of their location. The workforce for this project will include both skilled and unskilled laborers, sawmen, guards, welders, and clerks, with efforts made to ensure the inclusion of both male and female workers. Minister Edge Hill highlighted the importance of community involvement in government projects, stating, we wanted to establish four teams, hiring just over 40 people from the community to be involved in the construction of the road. We are looking to see if we can hire more people. When we do these programs, we want to empower the community, and the money must circulate within the community. To ensure accountability and quality of work, residents will be given petty contracts and will receive wages equivalent to those paid to laborers in Georgetown. The minister stressed the need for adherence to working conditions to ensure that the project is completed within the specified time frame. The ministry's special project unit will oversee the entire road construction, with preparatory work set to begin on Monday. Initial tasks will include road alignment, relocation of existing pipelines, grading, and widening of the road to about 20 feet, based on the community's request. Expansion of culverts is also part of the project, with these preparatory works expected to be completed within the next three weeks. Senior engineer Colin Gittens, who was present at the meeting, explained that one of the thickest types of British reinforcement concrete, BRC, will be used to ensure the road's durability. The project will also incorporate construction plastic and steel rods to enhance the road's structural integrity. This road construction project fulfills a commitment made by President Dr. Mohammed Irfan Ali during his visit to the region earlier this year. Minister Edge Hill affirmed that the government is serious about delivering on its promises, stating, Today, being here is a signal that the promise is being fulfilled right now. The road project is expected to significantly improve transportation and boost the quality of life for residents in White Water Village and surrounding areas. Region 4 residents receive steel and cement vouchers to begin dream home construction. In a significant step towards promoting homeownership, 
81 residents from Region 4 received steel and cement vouchers valued at $225,000 each, enabling them to commence construction on their dream homes. The distribution exercise took place on Saturday during the International Building Expo at the National Stadium in Providence. The initiative, led by Minister of Housing and Water, Colin Kroll, and Minister within the Ministry of Housing and Water, Susan Rodriguez, aims to support Guyanese citizens in achieving homeownership by providing essential building materials. Homes estimated at $6 million and below qualify for one sling of cement and steel, while those with estimates between $6 million and $25 million will receive two slings of cement. Minister of Housing and Water, Colin Kroll, hands over a steel and cement voucher to a recipient on Saturday. The beneficiaries expressed gratitude for the vouchers, highlighting the significant impact the assistance will have on their ability to build and own their homes. Mahadio Persaud, a recipient from Good Hope, shared his relief and excitement upon receiving his voucher. I feel happy now. I want to thank the ministry for this help because it is not easy to build your house just like that. I already started with the foundation, so this will be a great help to continue, Persaud said. Another recipient, 69-year-old Ezeline Saw from Vigilance, who had applied for the voucher in 2023, expressed her gratitude for the support. I am so relieved after a long time. I took advantage of today and got through. I am so thankful. It is a starting point. It gives you that encouragement to start and then, from there, you can improve on the structure and complete it, Saw noted. A recipient signing for her steel and cement voucher at this year's building expo. Parbati Singh, another beneficiary, highlighted the stability that home ownership would bring to her life. I can now start on my house. Because where I was living before, I got thrown out. I was getting pushed around all over. I am very happy about the voucher right now so my house can be complete, Singh shared. Minister Kroll reiterated the government's commitment to making home ownership more accessible and improving the standard of living for all Guyanese. He emphasized that the steel and cement voucher initiative is part of a broader effort to provide necessary housing support and ensure that more citizens can realize their dream of owning a home. This initiative was first announced at the International Building Expo in 2022 and officially launched later that year. To date, over 520 vouchers have been distributed to beneficiaries in Region 4, with more expected as the program continues. The Chief Executive Officer of the Central Housing and Planning Authority, CHPA, Sherwin Greaves, was also present at the distribution exercise.